Donald Trump's remarks about Kamala Harris go beyond just a critique. They touch on a deeper unease within our political landscape. His words challenge the legitimacy of Harris's rise to power, suggesting that her ascent wasn't earned through traditional democratic processes, but rather through political maneuvering. This isn't just about Harris. It's about what her candidacy represents. A potential breakdown in the democratic principles that many hold dear. She has no votes. And I'm very happy to run against her. I, I'm not complaining from that standpoint. And I hate to be defending him, but he did not want to leave. He wanted to see if he could win. They said, you're not going to win after the debate. They said, you're not going to win. You can't win. You're out. And at first they said it nicely and he wasn't leaving. And then you, you, know, the, you know it better than anybody. But anyway, so uh, when you think about it, they said at first they were going to go out to another vote. They were going to go through a primary system, a quick primary system, which it would have to be. And then it all disappeared and they just picked a person that was the first out. She was the first loser. Okay, so we call her the first loser. She was the first loser when uh, during the primary system, during the Democrat primary system, she was the first one to quit and she quit. She had no votes, no support, and she was a bad debater, by the way, very bad debater. And that's not the thing I'm looking forward to, but she was a bad debater. She did, obviously, a bad job. She never made it to Iowa. Then for some reason, and I'm, I know he regrets it, you do too, uh, he picked her, and she turned on him too. She was working with the people that wanted him out. But the fact that you can be, get no votes, lose in the primary system, in other words, you had 14 or 15 people, she was the first one out, and that you can then be picked to run for a president, it seems, seems to me actually unconstitutional. Perhaps it's not. Please. When Trump labeled Harris as the first loser, it wasn't merely an attack on her. It was a pointed commentary on the state of our democracy. The suggestion here is that rising to power should be about merit, hard work, and respect for the democratic process. However, Harris's rapid elevation to vice presidential nominee, despite an early exit from the primaries, raises questions. Did this happen because of true public support? Or was it the result of backroom deals that sidestepped the will of the voters? This sense of unease isn't just political rhetoric. It's a reflection of the anxiety many feel about the erosion of democratic norms. Trump's statement casts a shadow over Harris's authenticity prompting us to ask, is her political journey truly reflective of her connection with the people? Or does it reveal a disconnect from the very principles of democracy? For those who support Harris, this presents a difficult conflict. They may admire her policies and her representation, but there's an undeniable tension when considering how she came to be in her position. This internal struggle challenges the perception of her leadership and raises broader concerns about the state of democracy. In a time when authenticity and legitimacy are highly valued, the narrative around Harris's rise to power strikes at the heart of what it means to lead in a democracy.